and to worship and to glorify his name. He did not have to do it, but he did. And I'm glad about it. It's not because I've been so good. It's because he's looked beyond my faults and he keeps ministering to my needs. I'm just grateful. And I'm grateful that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Now, before we begin our worship experience, I believe that in the times in which we live, that everybody needs the word of the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to ask you at this time to take out your cell phone. Amen. Because you may need to text somebody and say, come on, it's time to worship. Go on your Facebook page and tag somebody and remind them that even in their bedroom, they can worship with us this morning. Come on, beloved. Come on, beloved. Come on, take out your phone and let somebody know that it's indeed time to worship because we are so grateful to even our virtual worshipers for being with us this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all Praise 
morning, St. Paul. Good morning. Join us in our call to worship. This is a thin place where earth and heaven embrace, where past interweaves with future, where people gather expectantly. This is a thin place where hopes are renewed, where faith is restored, where peace is revived, where love is refreshed. This is a thin place where fresh words are heard, deep wisdom revealed, daring promises proclaimed. This is a thin place where the God who shaped us, the Christ who remakes us, the spirit who inspires us, walk among us full of grace and truth. And together, God above us, God beside us, God within us, may we be open to see and hear your grace revealed as we worship you this day. Amen.
yes, Lord. Of all of our sins. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and giving us a mind and a heart to come to worship you. For you are so worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you for the many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us this week. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, somebody needs you in this place this morning for one thing or another. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We worship you. We magnify you. We lift you up, for you are worthy to be praised. My hallelujah belongs to you, O oh God. For you are a doctor in the sick room. You are a lawyer in the courtroom. You are our everything. You are a sovereign Lord. And Lord, we just love you. We magnify you, Lord. You are so worthy. We ask that you create in us a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within us. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning, Lord. We're not worthy, but you love us anyway, oh God. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to save us from all of our sins, Lord. He suffered and died. He had done no wrong, Lord, but he died for us so that we might have eternal life. And we are grateful, Lord. We are so grateful. Our hearts are full this morning, Lord. We pray for the sick and the shut-in. We pray for those who are bereaved, O oh merciful God. We lift up our pastor to you, O oh merciful God, and we pray that you would just gird her up. Give her a word to give us this morning, O oh merciful God. And we pray that somebody will come running to be saved, Lord. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for being a, a God of restoration, Lord. Restore unto us everything that the devil has taken from us, Father God. We ask that you would just be with us, lead us, and guide us, O oh merciful God, for you are worthy. You are our refuge and our strength. You said that we could come to you with all of our problems, all of our concerns, and that you would hear our prayer, Lord. And we thank you for that, Father. We ask that you go with us this day, lead us and guide us. Yes, Lord. It is in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep watching over me. lessons come from 2nd King, the 6th chapter, 8 to the 23rd verse. 2nd King, 6th chapter, 8 to the 23rd verse, and it reads, Now the king of Aras 
was at war with Israel. After confirming with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such a place and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of the passing that place because the Ramamines are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and time again, Israel, Elijah warned the king so that he was on guard in such place. This enraged, enraged the king of Ammon. He summoned his officer and demanded of them, tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord the king, said one of his officers. But Elijah the prophet who is in Israel, tell the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send the man and capture him. The report came back, he's in Dothan. Then he sent the horses and chariot and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariot had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so they may see. Then the Lord opened the servant eyes and they looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariot of fire all around Elijah. As the enemy came down towards them, Elijah prayed to the Lord, strike the army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elijah had asked. Elijah told them, this is not the road, this is not the city. Follow me, I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. After they entered the city, Elijah said, look, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and they were inside Samaria. And when the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elijah, Shall I kill them? My father, shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Would you kill those who have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them so they may eat and drink and go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the band of the Amorites stopped raiding Israel territory. Psalms number 79, Glory Pottery. Glory be. Amen, amen, amen. As I looked over the congregation, I was so excited to see Sister Allie Jones in the house. We pray God's amen. Blessings upon you. Amen, amen. And then I kept looking, but I wasn't sure because I only met this uh, preacher once before. But we have Reverend Carlos Redding, amen, from Florida, amen. He is relocated to Alabama and his bride, Kenyatta. I hope I had that right. Amen, amen. But do indeed know that all of you are welcome. So at this time, amen, if we have any visitors in the house, 
ask you to please stand because we want to stay in touch with you. Amen. That's how important, amen, you are to us. We realize that you had choices. So for those who are standing, we have a card, amen, that we would like for you to fill out and do an offering time, amen. You can drop it in the basket, amen. Let us show some love and welcome our visitors, amen. Oh, you are welcome. You are so welcome here today. Oh, you are welcome. Oh, you are welcome. Please come again to sing and pray. We are so glad you took the time and pray that everything is fine. And if we had our way, you would be coming here to stay. Oh, you are welcome. Oh, you are welcome. You are so welcome here today. Oh, you are welcome. Oh, you are welcome. Please come again to sing and pray. And the people of God said, Amen. We are so blessed here at St. Paul. We have a dynamic youth and children's ministry. Amen. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask our youth and our children now, listen, uh, uh, Noah, it's your choice because you're getting ready to go to Tuskegee. So you didn't graduate it, my love. Amen. I mean, you are a full and regular member now. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. But we are so blessed, amen, to have it up under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Kathy Bruce, amen, and Reverend Cassie Jackson. Look at our youth. We are so blessed, amen.
Indeed, God is wonderful. All praises to the King of Kings, for indeed he is wonderful. Reverend Jackson read our sermonic text in its entirety. And in your hearing, I'm going to lift up two verses from 2 Kings chapter 6, starting with verse 15. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning. An army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, uh, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, open, somebody say open. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And for a little while, beloved, I want us to reflect on this thought, see with eyes of faith. See with eyes of faith. Shall we bow? Shall we pray? Come, Holy Ghost. Uh, come with your quickening power. For your servant needs you, God, at this very hour. In and of myself, God, I, I know that I am inadequate, but I'm asking for a special blessing for your people have pressed their way into the sanctuary to hear a word from you. So it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray and the people of God in agreement said, Amen. Beloved, see with eyes of faith. I believe that uh, God is speaking. On last Sunday, uh, the sermon was based on a conversation that I had had with Brother Quincy and Sister Tabitha. And then this week uh, is based on another dialogue that I had with Reverend Pam and who brother Quincy. So I'm in this season in which I'm saying, speak Lord for your servant listens. Well, beloved, I'm about to, to, to share a tale and, and I first heard this uh, several years ago uh, as it was told by my late pastor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Kenneth Marcus. But this tale, this tale is widely uh, available on the internet. And it goes something uh, like this. You see, there was a young lady, Sister Celestine. Uh, she was visiting her in-laws. And so she went to a nearby supermarket to pick up some groceries. Several people. 
several people noticed her uh, sitting in the car uh, and the windows was rolled up uh, and her eyes were closed and she had both of her hands uh, behind the back of her head one customer one customer who had been at the store for a while uh, became very concerned and walked over to the car. He noticed uh, that the woman's eyes uh, were now open uh, and she looked very strange. So, 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 so he asked her uh, if she was okay uh, and she replied that she had been shot in the back of her head and she's been holding her brains in for over an hour. The man, the man quickly uh, called the paramedics uh, who broke uh, into the car because the doors were locked uh, and the woman, uh, she refused to remove uh, her hands uh, from the back of her head. When the paramedics, when the paramedics finally got in, uh, they found out uh, that the woman actually had a wad of bread dough on the back of her head. You see, beloved, I, I see how you're looking, Sister Val. Uh, you see, a Pillsbury uh, biscuit canister uh, had exploded uh, from the heat of the day, uh, making a loud noise uh, that sounded like a gunshot, uh, and the water dough uh, hit her well in the back of uh, her head. So when she reached back uh, to find out what it was, uh, she felt the dough and she thought it was her brain. Come on, tell your neighbors to open your eyes. It's just a can of biscuits. And if the truth be told, uh, some of us uh, are walking around uh, we're thinking uh, that we have been fatally wounded. Uh, we are shell-shocked uh, and we believe uh, that our situation, uh, our predicament, uh, the events uh, that are surrounding our life uh, are not going to get any better. Uh, in other words, our hope is gone. And I know uh, that it's been rough lately, but whenever something negative happens, we have a tendency uh, to only see the bad. When we focus on temporary circumstances, we focus on feelings, we focus on not the ups, but we focus on the downs of life. Can I tell you uh, that we need to learn that where we focus uh, affects our what? Perspective. Because if we focus down, then you're going to what? Be down. But if your focus is up, then you're going to muster enough strength. Come on, y'all, to get up. So, beloved, we need a different perspective. We need to see life uh, differently. Uh, you need to see yourself differently. Uh, you need to see your situation differently. Uh, you need to see the hand of God moving in your life differently. Uh, you need to open your eyes because it's just a can of biscuits. Well, beloved, uh, Shall we engage the text together? You see, in our scripture lesson, we find the Arameans attempting to wage war against Israel. But time and time again, the prophet Elijah warned the king of Israel of the enemy's plan to take them out. 
You see, in verse 9, uh, the man of God uh, said word to the king of Israel. Beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel uh, checked on the place uh, indicated by the man of God. You see, time and again, Elijah warned the king so that he was on his guard in such place. Well, when I, when I reflected uh, on that verse, uh, uh, I believed uh, that the prophet Elijah uh, was warned of the enemy's plans because Elisha had a relationship uh, with the Lord. And don't you know uh, that God will give you uh, revelation uh, of how the enemy uh, is trying to plot uh, and come up against you, uh, but you got to learn that you need a relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, because don't you know uh, that the God that you serve, uh, that he is still omniscient, uh, that he still knows the plans uh, and the tricks uh, of the enemy, uh, but God also knows. He knows what the future holds. And because he knows the future, God can reveal some things. God can tell us some things. God can show you some things. God can keep you from some things. But you got to be in what? Relationship. You got to be in relationship with the Lord. Don't you know with all of the foolishness that is happening in the world today that now is the appointed time to get right with God. Come on and do it now. Somebody say relationship. The Arameans. The Arameans' plans uh, did not come to pass because God was giving the prophet Elisha a spiritual revelation of the enemy's plot. And the king, the king of Aram, that brother was baffled. That, that brother was confused. He could not figure out uh, how Israel uh, knew his moves uh, even before he began to move. So the king of Aram, he thought that what? Uh, that brother thought he had an informant. He, he thought he had a double agent. He thought he had a traitor. You not with me. Uh, he thought he had a spy. Uh, in other words, that brother thought he had a rat in his camp but what he did not realize is that there was a man of God in town that the prophet Elisha that he was so powerful and he was so anointed that in verse 12 it says that, that, that Elisha knew the very words that you speak in your bedroom and then he goes to tell the king of Israel. So upon hearing this, the king decided uh, I get to Israel, but let me take this prophet Elijah out. So he sent a strong army. You're not with me. Uh, he sent a SWAT team by night uh, to kill the man of God. So when Elisha's, so when Elisha's servant got up early in the morning, the brother discovered that the city was surrounded by an army with chariots and horses. And he cried out to Elisha, oh my Lord, what shall we do? Elisha, 
Elisha tried to reassure him by telling him, don't be afraid, by telling him in verse 16 that those who are with us are more, come on, than those who are with them. But in my Holy Ghost imagination, I can see the servant uh, freaking out. I can see uh, the servant uh, thinking in his mind. I know that uh, Elijah is a prophet, uh, but this brother has lost uh, his natural mind because I know I can count. I know one plus one is two. I know that it's just the two of us, but it's an army out there. But it's the two of us. But his horses and chariots out there. Elisha. It's just the two of us. But the Bible says Elisha prayed on behalf of his servant in verse 17a. And Elisha prayed. He said, What? Oh, his eyes Lord so that he come on may see you see what you soon realize is that there was nothing wrong with the servant's physical eyes for, for the servant could see perfectly well that it was just he and who Elisha uh, just the uh, two of them who were clearly outnumbered and surrounded by an army with horses and chariots so nothing was wrong uh, with the servants uh, physical eyes uh, there was something deeply wrong with what his spiritual eyes Elisha, Elisha and his servant, they were standing, come on y'all, right next to each other, but they saw two different realities. And admittedly, too many times, we are blind spiritually. Hey, we, we bump into the wrong ideas. We, we make uh, disastrous decisions. We, we fail to comprehend uh, what the consequences uh, of our actions will be uh, because we don't have spiritual sight. We don't have spiritual insight uh, and we miss the greatness of God in our lives. Oh, can I press my claim? Uh, if we keep our spiritual eyes shut, we are unable to see that God can do anything but fail. If we keep our spiritual eyes shut, we don't recognize that God moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. If we keep our spiritual eyes shut, we cannot discover that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, you still don't have it. If we keep our spiritual eyes shut, we cannot see in the spirit realm that those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And I know I'm in Bible country, so I need some Bible to back that up. So come on, Psalms 91, 9 through 11. If you say, 
that the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling no harm will overtake you no disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways you don't have to chat Lord open our eyes that we may see with eyes of faith You see, some, some under the sound of my voice, I know uh, that we are caught up uh, in positions uh, where you can't see the forest. Come on, from the tree. You keep thinking that you are in control uh, of the situation but if the truth be told the situation is what controlling you and then you start wondering how in the world that you got yourself in this situation in the first place how did I get in this predicament I know I've said it before but it's worth repeating you want to know how you find yourself where you are right now because it was one appetizer it was one entree it was one glass of wine it was one dessert it was one cup of coffee you'll get it when you get home at a time and now you are surrounded by the enemy and you're wondering how you gonna get out of this mess Can I tell you uh, that if God uh, hadn't changed the situation by now, uh, that maybe God is saying that you need to change in the situation. Why not just pray? Lord, open our eyes that we may see with eyes of faith. So you know how the story goes, uh, that Elisha prayed and the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And the Bible says in verse 17, be then the Lord opened the servant eyes and he looked uh, and he saw the hills full of horses uh, and chariots of fire uh, all around Elisha. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with that fire another time because uh, I don't want to get lost with sight. Uh, but I just want to drop this in your spirit uh, that when he saw chariots of fire, uh, the fire represented the presence come on, uh, of God. Because uh, when Moses, uh, when he went and he saw, uh, he saw a burning bush, but guess what? Uh, the fire did not consume it when he saw the chariots of fire lo and behold God said I am with you I will never leave you nor forsake you stick to the script and when uh, the enemy uh, began to what, come toward Elisha and the servant Hey, the Bible said that Elisha prayed again and he asked the Lord to, to strike the enemy with what? Blindness. And God struck the enemy with blindness and Elisha led them into Samaria, the king of Israel's territory. Now, now, now my brothers and my sisters, what is my point? I, I really don't care what you are up against because your back very well may be up against the wall. You may feel that you are outnumbered this morning, but don't you believe the hype for the battle is still not yours. Come on, it belongs to the Lord. So don't you dare be afraid because if God be for you, he is more than the world against you. And like Elisha, don't forget the power of prayer because you need to call on the name of the Lord because if we pray through I just believe that God is going to come through I just believe that God is going to see you through I believe that God will take care of 
with you. I believe that God will make a way of escape and he will confuse the plans of the enemy. So don't you dare cave in and don't you throw in the towel. Say, Lord, open our eyes. You see, beloved, uh, there is a natural tendency to be swayed by what we see. I know the world says that seeing is what? Believing. But, but, but our vision will change uh, when our prayer life Hey, starts to change. Our spiritual eyes will open when we get connected with God. When you see things through the eyes of faith, don't you know that God is always bigger than your problems? Fear, anxiety, and hopelessness is got to melt in the presence of of God because in the midst of God's glory even the enemy is going to bow down so pray to use your faith as a lens to see your situation start to pray for discernment of the situation because I believe that God is still a way maker he's still a miracle a worker. He's still a promise keeper. He's still light in the darkness and God will take care of you. Just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Because there's a question. Sir. There's some questions we need to ponder uh, this week. Uh, come on, we got to open our eyes because we're living in some perilous times. So we need to start pondering uh, how do our prayers demonstrate uh, that we serve a God that can do anything but fail? How do our prayers show that what's impossible with man is always what possible with God? How do our prayers flow from the depths of our soul? Sometimes you just got to lay your pride aside. How are our prayers resolute yet humble? How are our prayers confident yet meek? How are our prayers expectant yet not assuming? What's my point? It's time to do a new thing in our prayer life. Perhaps God won't do it unless we fast and pray for it. Because the Bible says that this kind does not come out except by prayer and fast. Oh, I just got one more point that I want us to learn from the prophet Elijah. To me, it's the most important point. So if you don't remember nothing else, remember this. That Elisha, he did not ride the servant's back. <laughs> Elijah didn't nag the servant. Elijah did not belittle the servant. Elijah didn't call the servant blind. Elijah did not make the servant feel inferior. Elijah did not talk to the servant like he was stupid. Elijah didn't call the servant out of his name. Elijah didn't play on the servant's fears of weakness. You don't have it. Elijah did not disrespect the servant. But what we can learn from Elisha is that he what? Prayed for the servant. Oh Lord, open his eyes so he may see. You're looking at me strange. Why don't you pray for your spouse? Why don't you pray for your son? Why don't you pray for your daughter? Why don't you pray for a hedge of protection around them. Why don't you pray here that they see the goodness and the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living? Why don't you pray for St. Paul? Why don't you pray for your ministry? Why don't you pray? Pray 
hallelujah lord open our eyes you are not fatally wounded it's just a can of biscuits because god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that work in us don't you know that God he's not offended by your bold prayers for the word of God says to come boldly to work the throne of grace don't you know that we serve a God who created the heaven and the earth he weighed the mountains on a scale and the hills are the balance he holds the seven seas in the palm of his hands he rides upon the wings of every storm he is the God who divided the sea from Moses. He's the God who brought down the walls of Jericho. He's the God who delivered Goliath into the hands of David and the Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace. He's never failing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's sovereign, a mighty God. So open! Open your eyes that we may see with the eyes of faith the word of God for the people of God and those in agreement said thanks be to God. Beloved, 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 this is a very important part of the service. I'm not going to assume that everybody under the sound of my voice is in right relationship with the Lord. Perhaps there is one who needs to be saved. Beloved, beloved, I'm asking you to stand to your feet now and start praying and interceding. Because the word of God says, beloved, uh, that if what you believe in your heart, come on, that the Lord Jesus is your personal savior. And if you confess with your mouth, come on and believe, then you shall be saved. Beloved, now is the appointed time to get in right relationship with the Lord. Perhaps you're looking for a church home. I know that we'll have some people been hanging out Sunday after Sunday, amen. But now is the appointed time if you want to join St. Paul. The door is open, the invitation is extended. Beloved, will there be one? Come on, beloved, pray for somebody who you know who so need to be saved. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. I'm on the battlefield fighting for 
Amen, amen. Ask that you will remain standing. What time is it? It's giving time. Oh, what time is it, beloved? It's giving time. It's giving time. I invite you to join me in our ministry of giving scripture. Let us read together. God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them, and they will give thanks to God. Beloved, we are asking you to please prepare your offering at this time. If you would like to give online, we support Cash App, PayPal, and Givelify. Our preferred method, beloved, is Zelle because it does not incur a fee. If you would like to mail your offering in, 706 East Patton Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama, 36111. Or we have a locked mailbox behind the church, amen, that you can drop it off in. Please follow the directions of the ushers. And for those who did fill out the visitor's card, please drop it in. We do want to stay in touch with you, amen. Everybody, please stand. 
All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own. And of thine own. Have we given thee. Amen. Lord, in this season, I humbly ask you to multiply seeds that have been sown. That in the midst of everything going up, people are still trusting you, God, in their tithes and offering. Faithful God, I'm asking you to multiply it back unto them. Some tenfold, some a hundredfold, some a thousandfold. But have you bless them, God. We're going to exalt your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have the announcements at this time. Amen. And while we're waiting for the announcements to come up, I do want to bring to your attention that we have quarterly conference. We have quarterly conference on Wednesday, July the 26th. I'm well aware that that is doing the YPD quadrennial, so some of you will not be present. So I'm asking you to please get in your reports, amen, before you leave. If you can get in those reports to Sunday, amen. So if you fly on Sunday, get them in Saturday, amen, for we need those quarterly conference reports. It is our fourth quarter, so all of your activity that you did April, May, and June. Because do you believe we in a new conference year, amen? Because our conference year ended June 30th. I'm trusting God to amen. He gonna move on the heart of the bishop and send me back, amen. I ask you to pray with me, amen, amen, amen. Also, just a, a quick uh, reminder that you all know that I was on uh, sabbatical and so today we got a quick little uh, video, only like 12 minutes. I want to share it's going to be in the fellowship hall we do have amen refreshments amen and I want you all to get the refreshments first amen and this is a little healthy come on not healthy hefty hefty that's what I want to say refreshments I ain't say healthy healthy amen hefty amen but everybody is invited especially those who are visiting with us let's just come and fellowship and break bread and amen are we ready at this time amen amen it's kind of hard for me to sit up there, so I don't know if they saying, hey, Pastor, do the benediction or, or keep on going. What we're doing? They said, keep on going. Oh, amen. Well, please, I know how to handle that, and y'all saying, I'm glad because we're getting out a little bit early. Amen. Trying to see what other else is important. Amen. The, the Kickback Ranch. Amen. If you have not signed up, please sign up. We're going to pay, come on, for the first 100 persons who want to attend, and I'm going to put it out there. Come on, Pastor got a grant to pay for this. Amen. So we are not using church funds. All I'm asking you to do is to sign up and bring your own food. Amen. That's the only thing I need you to do is bring your own picnic food so the first 100 people to sign up I didn't say you had to be a member I said because it's family and friends so the first 100 persons to sign up amen are going to be free amen we do know amen that we're planning a one-night revival amen so that's July 21st kickback ranch is gonna be what July 22nd and then on that Sunday we're gonna celebrate 25 years of being on this campus to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Pastor gonna get a little radio so I know what's going on, but I don't see nothing. So we've been Yes, baby. Oh, that's real important. What time? They just need to show up or they need to let you know. Okay, listen, God is so great. Amen. And he's greatly to be praised. 
the Our Women Missionary Society, amen, they're going to have a food giveaway July the 17th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. This is not income-based, amen. Come on, you just need to come on and get blessed, amen, with some food. So once again, that's July 17th at 2 o'clock p.m. The Women's Missionary Society is giving food away between 2 and 4 or until it's gone. Yeah, because the early bird get the worm. Amen. Amen. Well, come on. Praise God. Is that what we're doing? No, you got it? Okay, then let's roll with it. Bring it up on the screen or some sort. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. Church, the home church of Rosa Parks. Today is July 9th, and these are your weekly announcements. Hybrid Sunday School continues to be held both in person and via teleconference. Please contact the superintendent, Brother Gene Johnson, for more information. The clergy renewal reception and pastor lovers time of sharing will be held immediately after worship service today. Get ready for the 25th anniversary of the relocation of St. Paul's campus and our family and friends celebration. Events are as follows. On Friday, July 21st, there will be a one night revival. Additional information to come. On July 22nd, join us for a day of family fun at the Kickback Ranch. The devil just mad, that's all, but we're going to open our eyes and we're going to pray for spiritual discernment. The that's church. All. Somebody said they agree. Ain't, no, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Church is paying the entrance fee for the first 100 attendees. Thereafter, the fee is $15 per person. A sign-up sheet is located in the front of the church. Finally, on Sunday, July 23rd, we will have the St. Paul Campus Relocation Worship Service. We are asking each member to sacrificially contribute $250 above your tithes and offerings to defray our annual conference assessment cost. God is faithful, and you have been tremendously faithful. And we are asking for you to continue to trust God in your sacrificial giving. On August 6th, there will be a brief Faith Leaders film on Medicaid expansion immediately after worship, followed by a panel discussion on how we might all help encourage our state leaders to close the health care coverage gap and ensure equal access to health care for all Alabamians. Lunch will be provided. Please plan to attend. This is sponsored by Together for Hope and the American Cancer Society. The Ethel M. Howard Women's Missionary Society will be distributing food to the community and surrounding neighborhood on July 17th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Please see Sister Mary Salam for any additional information. Call in all brothers for our weekly Wednesday morning prayer call. This call is a special time for brothers to 
come together to fast and pray. For any additional information, please contact Brother Ronald Smith. The health ministry will conduct blood pressure checks each third Sunday immediately after service. And remember to please stay cool in this hot weather. Please keep our sick and shut in and our church family in prayer and join our 12 noon prayer call Monday through Friday. Ministry leaders, if you have any announcements, please contact Brother Dwight Martin seven to 10 days prior to the event. And please make sure that your announcements are pre-approved. To stay informed with all church activities, please visit our Facebook page and our church website. This concludes this week's announcements. Have a great day. Have a blessed week. And please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Come on, let us praise God for our media team. Amen. They do work hard. Come on, stand on up. Amen. We get ready to go. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for our media team. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise. Oh, praise him. Praise him, all creatures here below. Oh, praise him. Praise him above. He has Oh, praise Father, Son. Beloved, I'm going to bless the food so that once you go into the fellowship hall, don't wait for me. Just go on and be served. Amen. Amen. God, we're so grateful. Our hearts are simply overjoyed. God, open our eyes that we may have eyes of faith. Lord, bless the food that has been prepared for our nourishment. Bless the hands that prepared it. And please, God, provide those who are without. Now, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord allow his face, his countenance, his favor to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God give you his peace, his peace that surpasses all understanding today tomorrow and forevermore and the people of god song oh.